I remember when I realized, oh my God, I think I'm a codependent. <laughs> So the term codependence has been, you know, used a lot and I'm wondering how that applies to what we're talking about in relationships and, you know, what does it mean for someone who uh, defines themselves as a codependent to be in a relationship and why do we struggle so much with that? You know, it's something that I took great pains to try to explain. Um, I find that there are so many books and so many different variations of definition of codependency. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to simplify it. And codependency is, is a, per, a codependent is someone who in a relationship always worries about other, one, other someone else's love, respect, and care needs, but is not able to get the same in return. And they seem to always pick that person who can't return that, much like a dancing couple. If you think of, of you need someone who is going to lead the dance and you need someone who's going to follow the dance and for that for that to work out people have to maintain the respective roles. Well the codependent is the caretaker and they feel so comfortable with the care needer or the narcissist and it's and it repeats itself over and over again until someone changes the role. And one of the things I like keeping in mind is your partner no matter what they are acting like, they're really longing to be a hero or a shero in your life. Mm -hmm. Like, they're wanting to, to, to be a great dance partner. And I used to keep making such lists about things Harville was doing wrong. <laughs> and I was convinced he was just making horrible mistakes in our relationship. And I convinced him he was making horrible, you know, I was. <laughs> and that, you know, if you, if you keep defeating your partner with um, all they're doing wrong instead of empowering them to do something right for you. Ask for shoulder massage, ask for hot chocolate at night, ask for a flower or, you so know. You're talking about, what I, it's the, um, the shift from nagging, whining and complaining, which I call the three Scrooges, to asserting what you want and helping the other person to feed you and nourish you. Small, tiny yeah. things yeah. and let them win at something. <laughs> Let them come through for you a little bit, and then they'll begin to come out of that shell, that narcissistic shell, and go, oh, maybe I am capable of And not feeling. expect them to read your mind and then right. be disappointed. Is that right. what you mean? Right. Yeah. All of us, the narcissist and the codependent, loves to live in the victim place. You know, our partner isn't doing that. That's low brain living. And asking for what you want. If you ask those narcissists what they want, they won't be able to tell you what they want. And you have to make it safe enough and even give them suggestions, let them have multiple choice until they tell you. So we all have to learn to stay out of the victim place and ask for little things that we want every day so our partner gets in the habit of becoming the the beloved of our dreams. You know, as I'm listening to this, I'm thinking to myself, which I often do even with clients is, you know, how does this apply to me and my experience? And because I learned the best from my own experience. And I realized, I remember when I realized, oh my God, I think I'm a codependent. Like, <laughs> like never would have identified with that, but realized, wow, like that's exactly, I've been a caretaker, a fixer my entire life. That's been my identity. And when I went through a process of realizing I have to take these certain hats off, to learn who I am, my true authentic self, and not over identify with the role or with you know the thing that I've done all this time, I realized, wow, that's, that's what I've been. I've been a codependent all this time. And partly it was just about understanding that, okay, that's fine, but I need to bring that into balance. Like I, I don't wanna be my mother who was the victim, right? And I don't wanna be the narcissist who are you know the partner that I, that I was in relationship with. So, you know, I have, to, I have to own both sides of that for myself and realize where I fit in all of that and what, what is my truth in all of that. You know, it just occurred to me that, we're, you know, whether you're the codependent or you're the narcissist, what do you really want? You want to be loved. So the codependent is thinking, well, if I give and give and give to you, you'll be like the parent I never had. You'll see how wonderful I am and now you'll give me love. And then the poor narcissist never had the right kind of love and thinks, well, if you keep feeding me, I'll fill my empty well. So they're both really the same at the core, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think I'd like to differentiate a little bit in the conversation. Basically, all, all of the labels that 
we have looked at are basically different refined uh, descriptions of two people who are frightened. And that what the question that, that uh, seems to be helpful is to ask that question. What, what, what is so terrifying that you remain in this particular position? They are both, to, they're they, both longing for well, connection and they're frightened and afraid to ask it. for it. Because they're longing. Right. Yeah, because yeah. something terrible would happen if they changed their defensive stance that would be more terrible than the misery of their defensive stance. So something terrible would happen if they asked for what they needed. And I think this topic is so important if you're in a relationship where you feel like you're not getting your needs met and you can't even identify what you want because it's so scary to think about asking for your needs to be met. Contact a therapist who has experience working with relationships and if you're in a relationship where this is the dynamic, get a good couples therapist today.